Hi everyone and welcome to a new video. This is week one of a brand new series that I'm starting called Kitchen and Garden Diaries. I'm going to be documenting the next 35 weeks of how we're living in response to the cost of living crisis, specifically around the groceries and the pantries and doing a bit of a challenge in that area, but not just limited to that. So if you think that that might be something of interest to you, then please hit that subscribe button and keep watching. This series is going to be about diarising all of the challenges that we're facing, not just here on our small holding, but in general across the whole of the country and in some cases globally. And really it's about sharing inspirational ideas, learning from other people on how we can combat some of these. More so related to kitchen activities, whether it's food related, grocery shopping, any household management topics will be thrown in every now and then as well. One of the goals of this challenge for us is making ourselves accountable for sticking to a really low grocery budget, which is £25 a week. Now, that's not for absolutely everything. So if you, if you are new here and you don't know what it's about yet, then have a look here and I'll try and explain some of that in a different video. But basically, we've got full pantries, full freezers. We've got a good base to be starting from. So £25 a week shouldn't be difficult for us to manage. And on the other side of it, we grow a lot of our own food here on the small holding as well. We already are quite self-sufficient in certain things, 100% self-sufficient in meat. So actually there won't be any meat that you see on any of our grocery hauls. But it's going to be interesting to see how much we can use from the garden and live off from the land, as well as topping up with that £25 a week from Aldi, which is another point. I only shop at Aldi. Every now and again, I do have to nip into Tesco for other things because there's not just me that lives here. I'm one of four. So there's myself, my husband and our two children and they have needs as well. And I can't stop them nipping into Tesco or other places if that's not what they want to do um, for other items, not grocery related. So but I will be shopping pretty much exclusively at Aldi. You will see in this video that we had to nip into Tesco for one thing though, and that's gonna happen. At the end of the day, doing this grocery challenge, we've decided to do it. It's not a rule that somebody else has put in place. So if we do decide to go to Tesco instead of Aldi, even though I say I shop exclusively at Aldi, then nobody's gonna tell me off for that, hopefully. In the coming weeks and months, we'll be doing other topics, not just around meal planning and grocery shopping, things like preparing for winter, how to keep your electricity bills down, and hopefully some other topics that we can learn from and encourage each other with along the way. Now, I will be showing you each week the meal plan and the grocery shop, and we'll get into that for week one just now. And also where I can, I'll show meals of the week. Now, if there's any recipes that people would like, I'm gonna do separate videos on those because otherwise these videos are gonna turn into hours long. Now, over on Instagram, I'm also doing daily posts about how much our meals are costing so that people can hopefully get some ideas to do at least frugal meals for themselves as well. Now this video is going to turn into quite a long one, so please grab yourself a cup of tea and let's get busy with how I started meal planning for week one. We're going to start by taking a look at what we've got to work with for this week coming up so that I can get my meal plan put together and I can get the shopping list written out and then we can get off to Aldi and get the last bits and pieces that we need. So we'll start off with the fridge, we're going to head over to the pantry, I'll talk to you about the freezers and then we're going to go outside and see what we've got to harvest ready for the week ahead. So there's no pre-tidy in here at all. This is the fridge exactly as it looks right now, which is very sparse in the bottom drawers. No milk, and we've got lots of other bits and pieces going on. So I haven't tidied this or anything, as you can probably tell. So these lotions and potions up here, this is strawberry juice that I'm in the middle of turning into cordial. And at the back of here, I've got things that won't be able to be used for meals because it's like sourdough starter and things like that. Somebody's had some of a drink and then clearly didn't want it all. And this shelf essentially is just what I use for uh, ferments and things like that. It's nothing that we'll be able to use for meals as such during this week, except for this puff pastry, which I have to admit has been in here a while. So I need to have a look and see if that's any good. We've got some chutney that's been put back in the wrong place. We've got some tomato sauce that's leftovers from some that I've recently made. Some salsa. When I say tomato sauce, I mean like a pasta sauce, basically. Some salsa. We've got some peace pudding that's actually gone out of date. So this is part of the problem that we're not using up everything. Um, if that looks okay and smells okay, then it will be getting used. Part of this journey is reducing our waste as much as possible. We're not 100% at that yet, and that's where I'd like to get to. What have we got in there? That is a stir fry sauce um, that was left over, which we can add into the tea that we're having tonight, actually. That's a good plan. These are um, 
the margarine type stuff that Grace pick, picks up to do baking with. Probably won't be getting any more of this because we'll just be transitioning to the butter, which is what this is and why that's left over there. So we'll be using that to bake with rather than the margarine based stuff. I'm not too keen on it. Stephen's peanut butter. So he takes a shake every day to work um, instead of kind of a a lunch if you like he takes a the high calorie um shake every day instead of a meal so it's just easier for him to drink that with the line of work that he's in instead of getting a fork out or sandwiches and things just some cheddar we've got some corned beef tiny bit of leftover corned beef which we'll do for sandwiches this is spinach there's a couple of leftover sausages in there and this is just some lard so we rent down our own lard from our pigs so we don't buy any any lard or any fats in that in that respect in here this avocado is probably too far gone i need to check it was for um a recipe that we ended up eating out these are i think the apricots let's have a look together yeah they are dried apricots we've got absolutely tons of those these are foraged plums that we've uh, just literally foraged not not long ago so they're ready to to be used up in a recipe and then in here we've got a tiny bit of uh, sad looking cabbage some lemon juice randomly in there for some reason and a bit of our own bacon so one thing that i've mentioned in the intro and i'll say again now is that we won't be buying any meat at all during this um challenge or this series whatever you want to call it we produce all of our own meat it's ethically raised and we know where it's been we know what's happened to it and all of that good stuff no chemicals um raise just how we like it and um you know each to their own we eat meat some people don't eat meat some people buy it from the supermarket or the butcher we'll get into some of that as we go on but this, this isn't the kind of challenge where there's going to be any preaching or any judgment so we choose to do that what you choose to do is is your own bag anyway what we've got left in the back of the fridge is um bits and pieces left over of continents really there's some sun-dried tomatoes there's marmalade nothing in here is going to go off um so therefore it's not going to go to waste either we've got a couple of open almond milks um and we haven't got any dairy milk at all at the moment which we do drink and we used to drink absolutely loads <clears throat> we used to drink absolutely loads um but for one reason or for one reason or another we don't now but i do need to get some more whole milk so that's already on the shopping list to get to maldi from aldi later on tonight now normally i don't do a menu plan and my shopping list all on the same night but that's just how it's worked out this week and i'm sure that'll be how it works out again in future weeks too um but i'm going to show you the process that i go through and talk to you a little bit about menu planning after we've been to aldi now this lonely looking bottle up here is a bottle of red wine that we weren't too keen on <laughs> we must have been keen on it enough though because it's half gone so that's going to be going in a recipe this week as well now let's have a little look in the pantry and again i haven't changed anything in here for anybody so you'll have to bear with me because there's not only me that works in here so i've got the light on it's preserving season at the moment so you will see tons of sugar which um is, <laughs> it's not a great start it's not ideal for you but this is basically because we're looking to preserve a year's worth of uh, different different preserves and things like that and we've got the equivalent salt for fermentation too and all of this will come out over the next few weeks as we show you what we're doing i've got a lot of what i'm calling lockdown leftovers now there is tons of pearl barley i've got tons of this stuff the soup and broth mix I've got all kinds of dried beans and things like that which need using up. I'm going to do a full pantry tour. I'm going to give it a bit of a tidy out and an organise just because uh, at least I'll know what I've got then. And I'll take you through everything. But basically every week I want to try and use up a different type of item. So I know that I need to soak the soup mix overnight, for example, unless you do it in the instant pot. Um, so I'm going to use this for next week's soup to take to work. And I'll just have to remember to soak it overnight. But there's quite a bit of that that i need to get through i've got the likes of this here which is the yellow split peas plenty of dried ingredients that although they won't necessarily go off um some of them are past the date that's recommended and again i normally don't take much notice of that but i do want to work through these before the winter comes because then if i choose to we can replenish them with fresh stuff over the winter now this mess down here these are my dehydrated um packages but can you see we've got apples red cabbage all of this needs a good tidy but what i do is i come in here and i have a look as to what i need to use up so these red cabbages are for sauerkraut i've got things like sweet potatoes there's carrots there's a bit of celery there's some broccoli which we're going to be using a lot of this tonight 
uh, what's under there some onions that I've seen oh no it might be a shallot actually I was going to say I've seen better days but they're fine oranges cooking apple off the tree this is just a hideous mess and I need to get that organized and I'm going to do that for you guys and do a separate pantry tour but just to give you an idea this is what we've got going on. Stephen uses a lot of almond milk in with his shakes that I mentioned. So we're actually stocked up on those. We've got six in at the moment. So I won't need to add these to my shopping list, but obviously once we get through these or when we get down to about two left, I'll start adding those onto the shopping list. You'll have to excuse the dog in the background. He's just been told to come inside because he's causing trouble outside. These are all my bottles, um, different bits and pieces here, soy sauce, vinegars, or all, all the different things that you would normally expect, Worcestershire sauce, you know, the, the usual the usual kit and caboodle that you'd find in a pantry. We've got chocolate spread. Now, it looks like there's three tubs here. There isn't. Two of these are empty. But, you know, that's what happens. What I'm going to do, I'm going to use um, a spatula to clean these out and make sure that we get every last bit out of them and put it into the one that's full. Because I said to the kids, you're not throwing it out when there's still plenty left, but then it ends up that I've got to do that. So that's fine. And down here, we've got um, the tins that I've got at the moment. So again, these are lockdown leftovers, but you know, I'm not worried about um, them going off or anything like that. So we're certainly not going to be short for protein. I'm hoping to inc include some vegetarian meals um, and this will be my source of protein from those. Random tin of baked beans there and two random tins of baked beans here, but okay. Different fruits, which we can just have as is or you know could go in a crumble or something like that here we've got things that people have helped me put away but they haven't actually put them away they've just literally put them on the shelf we've got some chamomile tea which i really like we've actually got our own dried chamomile as well but i won't have enough to see us through and that's for a recipe that i might be showing with uh, sharing with you guys soon but you can see essentially this is what we've got going on and then down here we've just got enough tea to supply a small community and these are just the leftover bits and pieces that I have out on my shelves. So if you haven't seen already, I've got lots of jars on shelves with spices and things. I just love the look and it ha it's nice and easy having them to hand out there as well. So as you can see, the pantry has not been organised so that everything looks picture perfect for this challenge. It's um, it, One thing it will 100% be is complete real life. We're going to go through this together. We'll learn from each other, hopefully. Um, and I'm really excited to be doing this. So, so if you've got any ideas for what to use some of these ingredients for, do let me know because we're wanting to keep our budget as low as possible each week, less than £25, as you know, if you've watched the intro video. And hopefully, you know, using the ingredients and things that we've got in here, that'll really help us to do that. Um, so we're not saying that we're living on £25 a week all in by any means. We're going to be getting supplementary stuff from the garden, from the freezers, to use what we've got in the fridge, what we've got in the pantry here. And all the stuff that you've just seen will hopefully help us tick over through this challenge, come up with some creative recipes, but more importantly, share it between all of us so that we can all learn different ideas and get through this crazy crisis time together. And then we'll see what we look like on the other end. But for now, that's the pantry. I will give it a good clean, clean out and I will come back slightly less embarrassed by it. <laughs> So the freezers, we've got a couple of freezers in the garage. We do have them full um, to the brim, as you guys may already know. And that's one of the reasons why we don't need to buy any of our own meat, because they've got lots of meat in there. They've got lots of things from the garden that we've ended up freezing. Freezing now isn't my preferred way of preserving, just because of the um, cost of electricity, essentially. So we will be working through using whatever's in those freezers over the next 35 weeks there is a lot of stuff in there i'll show you what they look like another day maybe in this video maybe in another one but i'll definitely show you but for now we know what we've got in the fridge we know what we've got in the pantry let's go and have a look in the garden and see what we've got ready to use <laughs> we always have at this time of the year at least is eggs but we don't have them in the winter so when we've got an abundance like we have now i'm going to start freezing them in little silicon trays and then getting them, getting them in the freezer and then i can pop them out individually and just put them in a bag so that when i want to make scrambled eggs which they're really good for they're not, they're not so good for everything but for baking and for scrambled eggs they're absolutely fantastic so I think I'll get that done as well because we've got a really good amount there and I still haven't got them all yet. So tonight we're having a sausage tray bake. So I'm looking for vegetables that'll 
Bakewell, basically. And at the moment, I'm going to get some beetroot, some carrots, hopefully, courgettes. So everything's got courgette in it at this time of the year. And then we'll go back up and get some tomatoes. Somebody's happy. Looks like we've got some nice tomatoes down here as well. So I'll grab a couple of these. And I think we're going to be looking for some marrow recipes too. I think we'll need a couple of carrots. Never good when that happens. It's better. And then finally, let's see if we can get some beetroot. So the recipe that I'm doing for the soup this week is gonna need these beetroot leaves. So this, you could use spinach or kale, but I've got perfect beetroot leaves here. So I'll be using the tops of these. Let's see what we've got under here. That's a nice one. That will roast up lovely. This is slightly different colour inside. It's a nice one too. I'll take this last one and then that'll give the others behind it a chance to grow a bit, thinning them out. I think we can make something nice up with this. Back in the kitchen, we've got our basket of veg, which I'm going to prepare for the tray bake. As you can see, we've already got lots of tomatoes coming through thick and fast, but we're preserving those as well. Now, one thing about the kitchen, I've always got a production line of stuff that needs to be worked on. It's a practical kitchen. I'm always busy in here. Um, these are the potatoes, actually, that we were supposed to have a couple of nights ago, and we didn't. I am actually going to be making um, a soup because we've got some sausages with our meal tonight. So we call our evening meal tea, by the way, just in case that doesn't make sense to everyone. So these are our sausages for tea tonight. I got these ones out because they'd ripped a little bit in the freezer. I didn't want them to get freezer burns. So these needed using up first. There's too many sausages here um, to have for our meal tonight, which is why I've got, but the reason I've got extra out is because I'm gonna make that soup, which has got potato in it. It's gonna be a sausage and potato soup. And I'm gonna use that for my pack lunch for the next couple of days while I'm physically in the office. These beetroot are, uh, they're called chogia. They're a candy stripe inside. Now I'm not going to peel these carrots as such, I'm just going to take off the little hairy bits and any, um, they've been washed obviously, you can see that and any other bits, blemishes that I just want to make sure I get out, I'll just take those off and then we'll chop these up and they'll go in with the beetroot. This one's got a little bit of damage on it from a carrot root fly, so that'll be absolutely fine, chopped off. Right, I've decided to add in a potato because I wanted to show you guys how amazing these purple potatoes are. So these are called Purple Majesty and they're absolutely fantastic. The best roasted though because they do dye everything else purple if you use them in like a soup or something like that. So I've just put one in. I've added some more carrots that you saw that we had in the pantry just to get those used up now that they're coming in from the garden. An onion, um, sweet potato for the kids. Uh, because I, I'm just thinking I don't I want to make sure that I've got enough basically I was a little bit worried that we wouldn't have enough that huge courgette which I've left chunky because these release quite a lot of juice and they'll cook down a lot quicker than everything else so I'd like I want to leave it so that they've got a bit of a bit of something about them after they've been roasted basically these are the beetroots and the carrots more beetroot and then we've got the sausages so I'm literally going to throw all that together with a little bit of oil in a roasting tin salt and pepper garlic powder oh I'll put some cloves of garlic in I'll add some chilli flakes and that's good. That'll do me for tonight. Might put a bit of balsamic vinegar on as well. I think we can safely say I didn't need to worry about not having enough, but remember these sausages are for soup as well for the next two days. So I've put the courgettes around the edge just in an attempt to kind of keep them, um, maybe the juices will run down, I was thinking, and they might roast a bit better. I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking. It made sense when I did it. Anyway, these are going to go in the bottom of them now and hopefully should be done in maybe half an hour wishful thinking let's see so a couple of things that i want to talk to you about um i should have put something else in the oven with what i'm making for tea tonight and i was going to do some treats for the kids and then i realized the kids aren't going to be here for the next two days so if i make anything it's just going to be sat there waiting 
for the next two days and I didn't really have time, um, I didn't plan ahead enough, it's me thinking I was all organised, to decide what else I could use the oven for. So one thing I'll be concentrating on in the future that I really want to improve on is making the best use of the oven when it's on. And what I'll do is, whether it's treats or extra meals or getting ahead for future meals, things like that, that's what I'll be doing. But to be honest, this is the only time we're using the oven this week anyway, because we've got the slow cooker and the instant pot for the working week anyway. When we get to the weekend, we'll see what happens. So I'm not too disheartened, but that's something that's gonna help us save on the electricity in the future, is making sure we, when the oven's on, we use it to its max and make sure, we use it to its full capacity, sorry, so that it's full rather than just putting in, you know, something small. But I think we can say that's not too small. <laughs> it's quite big. Should have put the silicon muffin cases on the tray first and then done it but this is the start of preserving the eggs in the freezer for winter um there's seven eggs in total there but they're not very big so i'm gonna say that each one of these muffin cases is about one egg so these are going to go in the freezer on the tray now so that then i can easily pop them out and just put them in a bag i can backpack them or just put them in a normal freezer bag once they're frozen i'll just keep those in the freezer and be able to go to them pick one out at a time every time i need an egg and um, stephen has cooked ev eggs every morning for breakfast so i do have a little concern that we might run out over the winter because our ducks aren't laying at the moment for some strange reason they started and they stopped again and the other thing that I wanted to talk to you about is the cost of the feed for our eggs and how many eggs a day we get. It's very expensive to feed the chickens and the ducks and not get anything in return. Thankfully, the chickens are making up for the ducks a little bit at the moment though. These are the purple potatoes. That looks absolutely delicious. So once I've got a list of what I've got in the fridge and the pantry and I've got my freezer inventory, I sit down to write the meal plan out. I've written an article on the blog that might help if you want to look at a little bit more detail around why meal plan. But essentially for us here on the small holding and moving into this chapter of the certainly the cost of living crisis, it's just going to help keep us on track within budget, help keep me sane so that I know what's expected of me every day to feed my family. And because we have three meals every day and those three meals are all cooked from scratch or prepared ahead, um, but they're not bought in, it takes quite a bit of planning to get that running smoothly. So meal planning at the moment, and certainly for the 35 weeks of this challenge or this series, is a really good effective way for me to help keep the budget on track and to let everybody know what is what meals they can expect if you see just here that's my menu board so i literally write out once i've meal planned the meals for that week so that if somebody wants to know what's for the main meal of the day they can go and have a look we have a selection of breakfasts that are really our go-to so you can pick from those but not on the morning we always try and plan those in advance because mornings are very busy and all of the time is valuable and lunches it depends where we are and what we're doing. Stephen generally takes um, a drinkable lunch because that works for him. The kids, when they're at school, take a packed lunch and that looks very similar every day of the week. But at the moment, of course, they've been on the school holidays. And for me, depending if I'm working from home, I can make something at home. Or if I'm in the office, I like to take in soup or leftovers. But every week I work out what have we got that needs using up. I take requests when, when the kids have got them or when Stephen's got them, which is very infrequently, to be honest. Write those down. Anything from the pantry, as I say, that we want to get used up, I'll make a list of it. And from that, we'll, we'll devise a, a meal plan. We try and incorporate all of the things that we want to get used up. And again, that's something that we want to get better at and encourage everybody else to do because it really does work. And that's what I find help keeps, help keeps the budget down. So I'll link the blog post that I've written just if you've got a bit of interest in that and that might help. And every week there's going to be a different theme 
for each week. I won't go into as much detail every week on the meal planning. I'll go into a different topic next week. Um, so let me know if you've got something that you'd like me to be talking about and to, do, to be doing a bit of research on and sharing with everybody. Because anything that we've got that we can share that might help anybody else is really worth it in my opinion. So let me show you what the meal plan's looking like so far. Excuse the shadow, the light's right above my head. So this is my week one. I'll be doing one of these for every week of the 35 week challenge. And the template that I'm kind of looking to use is writing a list of what have we got to use up. So from the garden, the fridge and pantry. And then I'm just listing out the days that I want to meal plan for. Sometimes if I've got inspiration, I'll go further on. Other times I'll just write them down in meal ideas so that we can um, use them if we get chance or if we've got the ingredients. Another thing that I find really important is um, looking where you can substitute. So if you've got an idea, so for example, a sausage tray bake, if you look up for a recipe for that, you don't have to follow the recipe exactly. You know, if you want to substitute sweet potatoes for white potatoes, you can do that. So something I'm always doing is substituting when I'm cooking. I find that's a really important, um, a really important point and that really helps as well. So you can see the idea. So Tuesday, sausage tray bake, and I'm going to cook that in the oven. Uh, Wednesday, I've got the red wine that um, I had in my head but didn't write down. Oh, that's not in the garden, but you know what I mean. So the red wine is going to go in with the chicken on Wednesday, which will be in the slow cooker. Thursday, Mongolian beef. I'm going to do this in the instant pot, and I've got a huge bag of basmati rice that I need to uh, get started to, to go through this another lockdown leftover. Then we'll go for another slow cooker meal. So I'm just trying to use the oven as minimal as possible because that's a big expense. The electric goes through the roof when I put the oven on. Um, so Friday is going to be a slow cooker chicken curry and I'm going to use up some of the courgettes from the garden for that. The Saturday will be burgers. So I've got burgers in the freezer to use up and I'll do homemade um, bread buns for that. Loaded fries using our potatoes. From the garden and then sunday i'm going to take into account the um traditional dinner request so we'll do a pork dinner on sunday because i've got pork in the freezer and all i'll do is go through each of these recipes and see if there's anything that i'll need to buy that we don't have in we don't need any kids pack lunches for this shopping list and now i'm just going to work through and see what else i might need i'm going to work on that now and then we'll get going and show you what we've got on the shopping list Right, we're just off to Aldi. Grace has just ran back in and got me a pound because I forgot it for the trolley and you need a pound for our trolleys at our Aldi. In case they go walkabouts, we've worked out how much we think it'll cost us for what we've got on our shopping list. And I just use the notes app that comes with my phone and it literally has like a little circle um, tick bullet point that you can tick off. I'll put a screen share in if I can remember how to do it. Um, and I find it really useful just to use that as we're walking around. I've put the list of what we need how much we think it will cost based on the supermarket prices on the um, internet and we think we'll get change from £20 so £19.61 did I say I think that's how much we worked it out to be so we've got our bags well one because we're not going to need very many we've got our pound we're off to Aldi and we'll show you exactly what the prices are in the shop happy to be here so we've just got back from Aldi and the total came in at 15 pounds 55 
Now, they didn't have a couple of things that I wanted, and I'll tell you what those were at the end, but let me just quickly run through what we've got, and I'll tell you the prices. The good thing about doing such a small haul is that it's going to be really quick and easy to do. The bananas are on Aldi Super 6 this week, so they came in at 69 pence each, and there are seven in each pack. The whole milk is four pints, um, four pints of whole milk, that's 145. The apples were 90 pence, and you get six in a pack for those. I got two broccolis this week for 57 pence each. The Aldi's tomato sauce, which the kids don't mind, so the ketchup was 65 pence. And then for the pantry shelves, just in case we run out of the whole milk, I got two litres, so they're a litre each of the long life milk. And that comes in at 75 pence each. The unsalted butter, the block of unsalted butter was 175, and the Nord pack was two pound, or Nord pack was two pound 19. The mushrooms came in at £1.30, the yoghurt was one fifty nine. the squash was 95 pence and the coriander was the only coriander that they have that didn't have the individual um, cut packs which is what I was going to get, that came in at 75 pence. So the other things that I wanted that I didn't get were, turn you around to make it a little bit easier, actually the only thing that they didn't have that I wanted was fresh ginger. Um, so I did think the apples were more expensive, but I was looking in the wrong place. So that worked out okay. And the tomato ketchup was cheaper than we wanted as well. And I also didn't get any extra fresh veg except for the broccoli um, and the mushrooms. And it just didn't look, for, there was nothing there that really took out fancy that we haven't got here. So I guess that's really good because it means that we've got plenty here to be supplementing our diets at the moment anyway. So the idea is obviously we're only supplementing what we're growing uh, what we can't grow in the garden or what we haven't got in the pantry shelves basically so really pleased with that so week one total is 15 pounds and 55 pence I've just got in from work it's about nine hours later and i have just popped in some of the broccoli the fresh broccoli that we bought last night chopped that up and just popped it on the top there left it on low i might turn it on high for maybe 30 minutes actually and then that broccoli will cook in the next hour or two when we're ready to eat i'm not serving it with any potatoes or anything like that we're just going to have it as a one pot meal tonight welcome to day three and tonight i'm going to be using the instant pot to make our meal i'm going to be doing my take on mongolian beef which is basically beef with ginger, garlic, soy sauce, and a sweetener. And I'm just literally salting some beef, uh, salting, flouring some beef now. I haven't got any corn flour that I can find anywhere. Once I do it, once I tidy my pantry out, I'll find it. Um, so I'm just flouring it with just plain flour. And then I'm gonna cook it off, uh, saute it very, just briefly on the instant pot, or in the instant pot, and then add the rest of the ingredients in and just, just leave it there for 20 minutes or so to cook away. I might do some rice with it um, or the broccoli, but either way, I'll only be using the Instant Pot tonight. I won't be putting a big cooker on. Um, we really saved last night on the electricity overall from just using the slow cooker during the day yesterday. So just using um, one appliance instead of the big, because putting the big oven on for just a small dish, which might take an hour or so, and it takes a while for the oven to heat up, etc., etc., just seems like a big waste at the moment with everything that's going on. And the Instant Pot, has been a lifesaver. So I've had mine for, oh God, maybe one one to two years now. I got it during lockdown. So I'll quickly show you it and then we can, we can get on with making tea. Always annoys me when the flash like that on the uh, on the camera. Anyway, this is just the um, the Instant Pot Duo. It's quite a big size, if I remember rightly. I think it's, yeah, it is. It's the six litre one um, or six quart, you'll find it called. And basically, they're fantastic so you can cook things in a lot quicker time it does take time to bring them up to pressure and then the cooking time is significantly reduced for recipes and once they've cooked it takes time for them to depressurize as well but an instant pot is definitely a kitchen tool i'd highly recommend now this one i picked up on um facebook marketplace as the lady had only used it once or twice and she had a free or she didn't charge me for a recipe book that she had as well so it was really, really, it was a bag and I think it was only about £30. So 
singing to us. The fact that I got this a second hand, so to speak, or, or barely used and for so cheap, highly recommended. If I could do it again, I would definitely do it again. I'd always go for the bigger model though, because then you can do whole chickens, um, bigger pieces, you know, your big soups and your stocks and your broths and things like that in it as well. So I think it's a really, really worthwhile product. I'm going to check the electricity now to see how, how much we end up using. I mean, bearing in mind, there's other things on in the house at the minute because it's, uh, where are we? It's 20 past six. We're a bit late tonight. Um, so there's other things being used at the moment as well, but it'll give us an idea at least. Now, I think there's newer models out than the one I've got, and, and that's fine, but the one I've got is, is works absolutely fine. I'd always go as big as possible, as I say, but I do that with most of my appliances anyway. Um, so I, I do find that the slow cooker is definitely worth for the electric. I'll find out about the instant pot, and I shall let you know once, we've, uh, once we're all cooked for tea. Um, but if you can find one secondhand, which, fair enough at the moment, might not be an option. I'm told... Um, Air fryers, the price of air fryers is, uh, not the price, but the availability of air fryers is just crazy at the minute. So that's something that I would really like to get um, again through the winter so that we don't have to use the big oven. Once this arg is fixed, um, which I've, I've done a separate vlog on that, but essentially that's that's it undergoing undergoing some repairs at the moment and once that's fit I won't need to worry about what appliance I'll use because that'll be on 24 7 and obviously if we're paying for the oil to heat that and it's on 24 7 I'd be silly not to use it but in the meantime until that is fixed and until we can afford the oil because that is another cost that's more than doubled um through, throughout this whole process so at the moment we're just we're not going there we're not buying it I don't know what's going to happen in the winter if we'll be able to or not We'll cover that one nearer the time though. Right, try and do this one handed quite unsuccessfully. <laughs> so I've just put the saute function on. This is going to be now warming up and I've added the beef. I've put a little bit of oil, olive oil in. I didn't wait for it to warm up. I should have done, but never mind. And I've put the floured beef in there. So I'm not going to add any salt in because I'm using soy sauce in this recipe, but I'm going to grab the rest of the ingredients now so that I can get them in and get this cooking away while I get busy with something else. That's the rest of the ingredients added in. Super simple. So I've just set this for 11 minutes and I'm going to set it to ceiling. And then I'll come back when that's done and we're going to get some rice and broccoli to go with it so too. The beef's cooked, I'll show you that in a sec. And all I've done now is just tipped it out into um, an oven dish. It's not warmed or anything, but it'll stay warm enough because this is just going to go on. It's white basmati rice. I actually got a 10 kilo bag, I think it was, out of my uh, lockdown leftovers that I was showing you. So that, that uh, rice was on the bottom of the pantry. And I want to start getting through it, obviously. So I've done two cups of rice, which should work out at about six cups. So I'm going to get the lid on and this is just going to go on for six minutes, but obviously it'll need to come up to pressure and come down from pressure. And also the reason I've done a little bit extra is anything that's left over will be for the dog's breakfast tomorrow. Excuse the lighting. I've had to put my flash on because um, the lights are straight above and they're just reflecting off this. This is the Mongolian beef. It just looks like beef and broccoli as well. So I guess this recipe goes by a few different names. Anyway, it tastes absolutely lovely, but I would put it on for 20 minutes next time for the beef. Um, not for the broccoli, just for the beef. The broccoli only needs two minutes at the most in the instant pot. And I would also not flour the beef. I would just add a cornstarch slurry at the end um, because some of the flour has clumped up ever so slightly. You probably wouldn't notice, but I am just because I'm looking for it. Anyway, it tastes really, really nice. So I'll leave that recipe uh, linked below as well. And all I'm going to do now is wait for this rice to cook and get served up. I started eating before I remembered to video it. So this is uh, a third gone almost. Um, broccoli, beef and basmati rice. It's absolutely delicious. So for tonight's tea, we've got a chicken curry. I've used one tin of coconut milk. I've used what leftovers I had of the Thai red curry sauce or paste that was in the uh, fridge. I've also added in half a jar of mango chutney because I've got quite a few of those in the pantry. And then I've spread also <laughs> added some medium curry powder. So it's quite a concoction that I've got in here along with some tomato, uh, so tomato puree that I had in the fridge a red onion and what else we've got carrot and we've got a few um, bits of potato on the bottom just from the pantry and now i'm going to add in some chicken on the top 
give it all a mix and then I'm going to put it on for about six hours on low and I'll see oh the other thing I wanted to add in silly me was the courgette the marrow from the garden but I'll only add that in towards the end because that'll just turn into um to mush basically so although I don't want it in big huge chunks I don't want it just turning into sauce either so I'll add that in with a couple of hours to go but that's what it's looking like for tonight so I don't generally follow recipes I just use up what we've got and using these has been ideal for, for the pantry challenge when you're loading your slow cooker up it's always best to put the thick root veg at the bottom so I have just stirred this a little bit which is why the potatoes come at the top I've put in a chicken breast it's a really large one it's about 400 grams I would have said and two drumsticks so what I'm going to do is when the drumsticks are cooked I'll just take the meat off um, and then I'll shred the chicken breast and stir that back in this is just going to go on now as I say for about six hours I'll put a tea towel underneath the lid just to absorb any extra moisture otherwise it'll become really really thin because when you're doing food in the slow cooker it generally becomes quite liquidy so the tea towel method just helps absorb the absorb the extra moisture and stop making it too thin so that's it tea should be done now just taking the tea towel off give it a stir and i've added in some of the almi that was in the fridge that needed using and that is looking really really nice now the oil's obviously just off the chicken skin so you didn't need to leave that on you could take it off if you wanted but it tastes really good i've just tried it but what we've had to do as well or not had to i totally forgot to make nan breads to go with this i've just nipped in to tesco because we were literally going past picked up some nan breads and some mint sauce let me show you that sorry about the light and the flash has come on though so we've got garlic and coriander mini nans there's six mini nans in there which will go between the four of us they were 140 and then some mint sauce because what i do i make it a kind of a cheat um mint yogurt so i use a tablespoon of mint mint sauce with so some of the yogurt that you guys saw me buy and then just mix in a tiny bit of sugar and it just makes a nice mint yogurt and that's what we'll have with the naan breads and the curry because uh, we're not having any rice tonight but that's ready for whenever we're ready to eat now absolutely delicious obviously i'll add this and the naan breads onto the um the weekly total for tonight's tea we are having movie night and i'm doing some sweet potato loaded fries with some burgers so really simple the burgers are out of the freezer the homemade and then frozen in burger patties sweet potatoes i will put in a bag drizzle with some olive oil and seasonings coat them well and put them on for about 20 minutes in a hot oven along with the burgers and then we shall eat nice and easy well as you can tell it's not saturday and i'm not having burger and fries but they were absolutely delicious really pleased with how they turned out we literally sat down had a movie night we've, we've started movie nights on saturdays like i said meaning that all the family are just going to be in one room so there's only one electric device on after the oven's been on we came in here and there was just the, the movie the tv was the only thing that was on all night so it saved on the electric but once i'd had a glass of wine and then we started eating totally forgot to get the footage but rest assured it was really nice and really frugal as well so i'm pleased with that and then on sunday Stephen and i had a lot of manual work to do on the morning so we got really busy with that and it took from nine until two about half past two we got before we got finished we were building an outdoor kitchen we're doing it all ourselves and we had about four to six ton of dirt or soil that we were moving on the morning and goodness me it really took it took it out of us and i had the pork out to do a pork dinner on the afternoon and Stephen said i'm going to treat you all to fish and chips because we were so sore and so tired and who am I to say no to fish and chips? It was really, really nice. So incidentally, if anybody's interested on how we work that budget, so what we call the entertainment budget, let me know and I'll just mention it in next week's video. But that didn't come out of the grocery challenge uh, money because it's not part of the groceries. And that took us through Sunday, thankfully, and we're back into another working week now. Well, we're back round to Tuesday, so we are going shopping later on tonight, and this meal is one that I actually didn't write on the meal plan because I only did up to Sunday. So yesterday we ended up having a roast pork dinner, which you guys saw, which was a rollover from Sunday because of how busy we got, and today is a sausage and pearl barley casserole. Now, I put this together early on before work, didn't get a chance to get any footage, and it's been in the slow cooker all day. One benefit of being in the slow cooker for tonight, obviously with it being a shopping night and I've got a lot of editing to do and things like that, it does mean we can just scoop it out into a bowl and eat. I'm smiling because I've put too much pearl barley in it and it's just turned, you can stand your spoon up in it. It actually tastes really nice and I didn't brown the sausages off before so I know a lot of people won't like that. So there might be pale sausages. 
um, but that's fine, it tastes really nice, we still enjoy them. And I didn't want to brown them off earlier because it's more trouble for me and also it would have meant I'd had to put the hob on as well and it's a low electricity day for us so it's just slow cookers only or slow cooker or it tastes really nice. It doesn't look that great. <laughs> I've just added some frozen sweet corn just for a bit of extra veg because there's sweet potatoes and things in there and it's all just kind of dissolved into one. So it's very nutritious, just doesn't look that, that appealing. So I'm going to serve it up now and I'm going to add some of the fermented salsa because we've used all of the other salsa up. I'm going to put some fermented salsa or maybe some sun-dried tomatoes as well. Um, so it's like an extra tomato kick. I'm just looking what else I've got <laughs> so I can maybe hide what's underneath it. <laughs> anyway, that's your last meal for this week. I'll show you what it looks like. <laughs> there we go. This has now got some garnish of parsley on just to try and give it a bit of green. This is the fermented salsa that I made. We've got plenty of, um, I was going to say tomatoes, sausages here for Stephen and then just some sun-dried tomatoes that we've got left over chopped on as well. So hopefully it's gonna taste nice.